This video describes the solar macro scale magnetic fields leading up to the great Mexican earthquakes of 2017 and how it likely fits with our previously published model. So unless you are new here, you know this was the earthquake alert zone posted for the Americas the night of September 7, 2017. The next morning a magnitude 8.1 shook the red alert zone in southern Mexico, making for the largest earthquake to occur during the 11 months and 2 weeks of this model's existence. We are indeed almost to its first anniversary, and a video on that will be coming later this month. Today, we are going to be going back in time to 2015. Our papers from then are top right at QuakeWatch.net. The one with co-authors Dr. Uyen and Holloman is where you'll begin. I'd like to quickly acknowledge my co-authors, Dr. Holloman from the Statistics Department at The Ohio State University, and Dr. Uyen from NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. So first, the sun has magnetic fields coming out of the poles just like Earth. In reality, towards the middle they spread out in the solar wind electric field, but this simple diagram is vital to understanding the behavior of the sun's polar magnetic force as measured at our planet, starting top left. Let's say the southern fields are stronger now, bold and blue. You can be pretty sure that six months later the northern fields are stronger, shown as red in bold. This goes on until the poles reverse on the sun every 11 years, as seen as the colors flipped at the poles, at which point the smaller cycles of six months continue until the next reversal. The back and forth on the semi-annual and 11-year scale looks like this when plotted, and it is very cool looking but utterly unhelpful without taking a closer look and pay attention because we're not slowing down. This is the period of 2010 through 2013, six largest earthquakes, all above magnitude 8, with two of them happening on the same day there in 2012. Vital point number one. Throughout our existing record, we see the spikes in magnetism of the sun correlated in time with the largest earthquakes, but also the polarity reversals, as you see on the right where the quake occurred as the southern fields in red had their polarity reversal. So let's go look to another time period. From the left, we have blue positive peak, total polarity magnetism reversal in yellow for the second one, northern fields in blue peak again, and a rare triple curve reversal on the right side. These again, largest quakes during this time period. I'll continue. Two on the left are polarity reversals. The middle earthquake was a rare outlier that didn't fit, but on the right we have a double polarity reversal in yellow with two major seismic events, followed by another at the southern red fields peak up in the positive. Again, largest events during this time period. Well, what about any years that didn't really fit the model? Well, here are some. In this case, note four blue humps up top. In this case, all four of the largest earthquakes in the period occurred between 19 and 21 days after those spikes in force, and the others were mostly within two weeks, so this was a bit longer. Over half of the earthquakes that hit in the model occurred within just a few days of the spikes, and so we actually had to call this a failure, even though it looks pretty good that 19 to 21 days is just too long. Well, here's another example. Yellow line hit zero three times. 23 to 25 days later, the three biggest earthquakes during this time period occur. We do not know why some of these periods tend to have a longer wait time than others, but indeed an inexplicable plasticity to the pattern's temporal correlation is evident. Now, we come back to the present case. Let's stretch out the beginning of the current post-reversal cycle and see the recovery period and now the first southern and northern spikes. We know for a fact that the curves will be trending negative until about March or April, and that started a few weeks ago. So that's the latest blue spike up top, expected to come back down quickly. And the data is current through mid-September, which means that the titanic Mexico earthquakes struck at the peak of solar magnetic force once again. If you are interested, you should read our 2015 papers, which are on the timing of earthquakes using the sun. The papers from 2017 describe the first 100 days of this earthquake forecasting model that nailed the location of the Mexico earthquake. As I mentioned, the first year of its forecasting is up in about two weeks. The top three events this year were hits for the model. Four of the top five, the biggest in California and Italy, and 75 of the largest quakes of the year. Model update coming later this month, and no matter when you are watching this, I'll see you for the news in the morning. Be safe, everyone.